times, Rose has been a symbol of love and beauty. Today, it is still is. This flower provides a diversity of colors, each with different meaning, has been our complicit in many occasions to celebrate, congratulate, or just fall in love. In Colombia, the rose has become the fourth export product and the second one in the auto industry, and one of the most representative countries in the production of flowers worldwide. Today, let's visit a crop of roses type experts in the Department of Cundinamarca Municipality of Cogua. Over there, different people will tell us throughout the process from the preparation of the land until the flower is ready to be exported. Let's start by climatic conditions that rose it needs for its establishment. In Colombia, the ideal temperature for the cultivation of the rose is between 10 and 17 degrees Celsius. It's a crop very demanding in the lighting, for this reason must be a periodic washing to the greenhouse. Ventilation is very important because it helps the management of various diseases such as mildew pulboso, mildew veloso and botrytis. The soil pH should be between 5.5 and 6.5 in order to ensure a proper plant nutrition. Soil type varies according to the area, in our case is a rich clay soil with physical and chemical properties. The cultivation of the rose expert type should be done under a greenhouse in order to provide a suitable environment for the optimal plant's development, protecting it from climate that may affect it as rain, hail and frost. This ensures a flower of excellent quality, free of pests and diseases. In the business of flowers, different colors are handled in order to be able to consolidate a sorter according to the need of the customer. In our crops, We have different colors such as red, white, yellow, pink, and many by color. Let's begin the roses crop process. Let's talk about preparation of the flower. Growing bed preparation begins with the eradication of the plants. We should have cleaned up, eradicated, leaving the area completely clean. Followed by this, We do application of composed soil amendments like black soil, inorganic amendments such as lime dolomite, some fertilizers based on phosphorus for the proper development of plants. Then we apply an incorporation of all these material. These additions can be made with the tractor or can be performed manually. After the additions, we start raising the growing beds preparation. For doing this, we use ropes that helps us guide to form good beds we are going to raise. And then we would perform the planting. We do a sewing of a pattern. Pattern is called natal brayer. The pattern always arrives in a glass rooted with a substrate such as land or rice husks. We make a hole into the bed and then the pattern is placed. After four or five weeks, we implement Lagovia, which consists of bending on the side the upper part of the pattern to remove upward growth and stimulate the stem where you make the graft. In this case, we started the implementation called implementation in Gazette, better known as a patch. Then we do the cut, which has to be from one centimeter to 1.5. We proceed to remove the bat that was born from the production of the plant. We choose the best bots to make the process of the graft. Then we proceed to tie the graft with biodegradable tape so that there will be no problem to cover the graft. After 15 or 20 days, the graft begins to sprout.
after the implantation, there are some days spent where the graft begins to grow. We do some cultural tasks such as weeding, flower button removing, sprout removing. We also perform a defloration, removing the main flower so that the mature stem begins to take enough power and mature part of its crown. The idea with this is to stimulate the vasileo, which will then make our main shaft for the formation of the plant. We already talked about plants that are in training. Now let's see which plants are in production with these following activities. The irrigation, tutoring, fertilization, the weeding, the mushing, the flower bottom removing, the sprout removing. The irrigation is performed in two ways. The first irrigation by drip, which is made daily fertilized directly to the root part of the plant. Another irrigation, which is done, is the flute, takes place twice a week in order to improve the relative humidity of the greenhouse we should be between 50 and 60 percent. In this crop tutoring is done by strings that are placed along the area to create the plant. It makes the crop process easier. Furthermore, it helps to improve the production. Fertilization that takes place on the farm is rich in nitrogen, potassium, calcium, phosphorus and magnesium. Some smaller elements also as magnesium, iron, zinc, and copper. These elements are essential for the growth of the rose and the maintenance of the flower for our customers. Fertilization is carried out through drip, which is preparing our station of fertilizer according to the requirements of the crop at this time. It's performed daily, which is aimed toward the root of the plant. The weeding is a practice that seeks to remove any unwanted plant material that can restrict the good development of the plants that are in production. The meshing is another cultural work carried out on the farm, which is about protecting this kind against ultraviolet rays so it does not bronze petals. For example, this flower, where a mesh is placed, is for avoiding this tanning keeps spreading throughout the petal. The meshing should be done before the flower starts its phase of color button. For example, in this state, this state is ideal to locate the mesh on the bottom so that it continues to grow and protecting it from the sun's rays. We also have to remove the bottom side of the steam to give force to the plant. Other cultural work is to remove all buds that are not going to be productive for the plant. Those are removed manually and this work has to be done weekly. Among yellow roses, white, bicolor and pink, we see Mariluz. She is a lover of her work and she has a great charisma. She's going to tell us how her experience has been working with this plant and what meaning it has in her life. I have been working with plants for 12 years. I like roses because they fascinated me. Their colors, shapes and essence. That's why I love flowers. Well, here we go to the station with our 20 flowers on wheelbarrow. 
here are packed according to the variety. Marilos highlights around roses, not only for her beauty, but also for the love she feels for every flower. This is just one example of many you can find in all the crops of Colombia, where women are searching a better future. They have become the economic engine of their families and a fundamental pillar in the socio-economic development of the country. I arrive here, I cut all my plants, I tell them to be beautiful. Because, you know, flower is a living being. If you talk to them, they hear you. They don't answer you, but they hear you. Thanks to them, we can even fall in love. So, if we really work with tenacity and enthusiasm, we can get a good product for export, and we can have a good company. I think the key is to give love. For these fighter and responsible women, working in this crop has become a learning experience. I have always said that no one can teach you how to work with plants. Plants teach you themselves how to work with them. That is true. Each plant teaches you how to treat them. Each plant teaches you how to do the procedure from sowing to the export process. The roses in her life go beyond of a dotty. Well, to me, roses mean a lot. They are absolutely everything, because thanks to them, I could get ahead. I could find a good school for my child, and I have helped my family. I have been able to collaborate with them. Because our life has not been easy, but anyway, thanks to these crops of flowers, we have been able to organize ourselves. Thanks to them, I have my house now. And for me, that is unconditional. At this moment, flowers are unconditional to me. And I speak not only for myself, but for many families. There are many women who are at home. And they depend on flowers. So I define flowers as the best thing in life. Now let's know which pets and diseases could attack this crop and what is the plant production management. More common pests in growing roses are thrips, mites and acids. We have preventive controls, curative and eradicate controls. What do we do is passing the monitor by the greenhouses with a plane looking at the incidence of these insects or mites on the farm. The monitoring is a way to detect the pests and diseases on time before they cause considerable damage on the plant. check the monitoring every 8 days and 50% of each bed box and it's checked will be by side to side. If there is a presence of these insects we have to implement applications both preventive and for eradicating. The most common illnesses in this crop are the mildew pulboso, mildew belloso and botrytis. Those diseases arise due to the abrupt changes in temperature. Mild veloso and botrytis occur in extreme changes, just like this that is raining and the sun shines just after. These weather conditions flavors for the fungus attack the rose. It is different with the mild fulboso. That illness occurs when there is air flow. 
when there is a dry climate and the land is very dry. For the control of the mildly pulboso, we managed to wash. The mildly pulboso is a fungus that are controlled easily simply by removing the presence of spore. Then we do the washing at high pressure with some products to control it. To the control of the mildly veloso is simply, when the monitor reports a focus, people eradicate it with alcohol. The fungus is burned and withdraw from the plant. For the control of botrytis, it's a bit more complicated because this fungus attack dead tissue. So we have to use environmental applications to be able to eradicate it. In Colombian floriculture, the theme of social responsibility becomes something inherent to the development itself. In this enterprise, we are certified with the Seal Quality Rainforest Alliance. This allows us to have a good agricultural practices project. That can be noticed on the quality that we deliver to our customers. We develop culture or awareness in our workers to be friendly to the environment. The use of qualified products for good agricultural practices, additionally to the crop works for the community, we believe that it is important to work from early childhood. We are members of the board of the rural school. And in addition, we have education plans in childhood with regard to the care and healing in the environment. We consider that the well-being of our employees is important as a main target group for the farm. We work with a perishable product because flowers fill, and that is what we communicate. If we can be in harmony with our work, we are going to see reflected on the product and we are going to position our product. We are now at one of the moments that more satisfaction and joy has brought to our workers of the crops. Cutting is one of the last tasks we perform on the farm. Every day we arrive and we check which flowers meet according to market conditions. Then comes the cutter, which has seven designated lots to be cut. We pack them. There is a place where we select them by degrees. We pack them in boxes of 25 units plastic each box. Then passes a transporter, picking them every 40 minutes post harvest. And there they proceed to make the process of selection according to the market. When flour gets to the place where the post harvest is managed, the flour has to be placed in water with calcium hypochlorite for two hours. After being hydrated, the flower goes directly to a classified and selected by length, by stem, size button and opening. We check its health and depending on the market, one third of the foliage is removed. Then the bouquet is made depending on the market are then carried to the band when they are registered. They are cut and again they are hydrated before being packed. It must be hydrated for at least 6 hours. Ideally, that flower will moisturize for 12 hours in a cold room. Finally, the roses are packed according to the requirements of every client and they are sent to different countries. The exports are done for more than 20 countries like Argentina, Chile, Brazil, Japan, the United States, Canada, Russia, and some countries in Europe. For this company, the main market is Russia, 
which our company sends 50% of the flowers produced in cultivation. This country has high requirements in quality and they prefer a long stock, good size of heads plant and excellent conditions. Colombian flowers have a privileged place with the preferences of the international consumer thanks to its high level of quality, variety, sights and beauty. What do we expect for the future? We hope to remain as a strong and solid group as we are now. How can we make it? Keep in a process of continuous improvement, maintaining the GAP which we have in the farm and strengthening our economic, social and environmental groups. Those that allow us to develop marketing strategies and positioning, creating sustainable alternatives for the company and the sector itself.